and welcome to today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Here's hoping that all has been well with you and yours in your COVID-19 universe since the last time we had the opportunity to spend some time with you. We start today's show talking about something that is troubling, something that is scary, something that is bothersome, something that is very telling about our society and particularly our part of these United States of America. All across this country in recent memory, and I will leave to you to decide whether or not it is symptomatic of a much larger problem if it is COVID fatigue, lockdown fatigue induced, or whatever you want to assign the blame to. But in recent memory, in our state, our region, and in a lot of the rest of our country, crime has taken a very ugly turn, particularly as it relates to homicides. Just yesterday, we talked about the two 16-year-olds that killed each other, not very far from Baton Rouge. We also talked about the horrific incident at the Walmart in Lake Charles where a 15-year-old girl was stabbed to death by a group of teenage girls, 12, 13, and 15 years of age. As horrific as the crime itself is, we now find out there was an immensely more horrific aspect to this particular crime. According to KATC, Acadiana's news channel, Calcasieu Parish Sheriff Tony Mancuso called a press conference to talk about the stabbings at the Lake Charles Walmart that left this 15-year-old girl dead. Mancuso, Sheriff Mancuso, says the girls allegedly stole knives from the Walmart to stab the victim. Here's where the wake up call has to come into play. The sheriff said the entire incident was recorded on social media with videos, posts, and pictures that were, quote, very disturbing. The sheriff also pointed out this is the third homicide in six months involving children younger than 16 years of age. Quote, we have a problem in our community. We're going to have to address. They come from all backgrounds, all races. This is just a problem we're having with children having access to weapons or stealing weapons. It's just heartbreaking when we have to come in and pick up the pieces because so many families are damaged. This is a cycle we have to stop, and we're fed up with it. He went on to add that immediately all law enforcement in the parish will be aggressively enforcing curfews set by state and local laws. 11 a.m. to 5 a.m., 11 p.m. rather, to 5 a.m. Mondays through Thursdays, midnight to 5 a.m. on weekends. However, that being said, the police cannot solve this problem by themselves. Quote, this is not something we can police our way out of. 
I just don't feel like this is a police matter. This is a parenting issue. People need to know where their kids are. They need to know what's going on in their lives. We're going to take some aggressive steps. This is going to be parish wide, every city. We're all going to be on the same page. We're going to have zero tolerance on curfew violators. What it says to us is something that I don't know we're ready, if, if, if we're ready or not to entertain this. I know and, and I try with every passing day, the older I get, not to fall into the trap of, well, back in my day, but that is a part of the natural experience of this journey that we call life. You have to have a reference point for all things. And I'm no Pollyanna. I, I, I would never try to convince you or anyone else that there weren't juveniles involved in crime back in my day. I certainly would not be so foolish as to try and insinuate that there weren't stabbings back in my day. But this is tantamount, posting on social media, the entire episode. This is tantamount to back in my day, you going and stabbing someone to death and immediately getting on the telephone and calling every single person you could think of and tell them, guess what? I just killed somebody. Ha ha. When we arrive at a point in our society where our children, 12, 13, 15 years of age, number one, will go into a store, steal merchandise, and kill someone, and then, mind you, put the entire episode on display for all the world to see, we got a major problem, y'all. We got a major problem. The sheer reluctance, unwillingness to entertain the sanctity of life is one thing. It is what it is for an individual of any age, race, creed, color, to be willing to take someone's life in such a horrific fashion is one thing. But how in God's name do you come to the conclusion that after robbing someone of their life, that it's okay, that it makes sense, that it's a good thing, that no one will mind, that you put it all on social media. I know it is a part of the human experience that as we go through things in life, we look at them hopefully and analyze them for what they are find out what lessons we can glean from whatever the incident happens to be. I get that. But every now and then we run across something that should grab us by the scruff of the neck. And as my former ROTC sergeant was so fond of saying, should beat us vigorously about our head and shoulders. 
12, 13, 14, 15-year-old females murdering someone. And if that weren't bad enough, they post the entire thing on social media. I know a lot of folks younger than myself of the opinion, oh, them old folk, they're always making too much out of, out of stuff. They're always trying to create a mountain out of a molehill. This is a wake-up call, y'all. This is a wake-up call. It should bother every single one of us that the least among us, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, are not only willing to take another human life, but after we do it, or in this case, while we're doing it, we'll record it and post it for all the world to see. Something is rotten in Denmark. And we will have no one but ourselves to blame if we continue to fiddle while Rome burns. First break of today's show. We're going to talk more next on the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Team Honda wants to thank you for once again making us Louisiana's number one new car dealer by offering you never-before-seen savings. For the first time ever, get 0% financing up to 60 months on some of your favorite Honda models. Get thousands in savings right now at Team Honda on Segan Lane. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time.
Welcome back to today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Um, this, I, I will be the first to admit, is chilling. It is um, an indictment. And I'm not talking about these 12, two 13-year-olds and a 14-year-old for their actions in this stabbing in a Walmart. It's, it's an indictment of us as a society and what we have allowed to happen in this country. The sheriff, I, I failed to mention, Sheriff Mancuso in Calcasieu, said in no uncertain terms that, look, I understand a lot of you parents, grandparents, y'all are not tech savvy. You don't know about the inner workings of Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Parler and you know all the whole social media universe that's out there. He understands you, you, a lot of you aren't tech savvy. But he cautions, you better learn. You better figure this out. You know, it um, was part of the American landscape as, as a baby boomer growing up. Not only did our parents know who our friends were? They also knew who our friends' parents were. Why is that important? Well, my kids, Clarence, my kids not hanging out with their parents. No, but the apple typically doesn't fall too far from the tree either. If this group of your child's friends have parents that fall into certain categories, understanding that many times the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, you might need to find a new set of friends for your kids to hang out with. And I understand a lot of y'all out there want to be your children's friend. You need to be a parent. That's what you need to be. And the sooner we get back to doing that, the better off we're going to be as a society. I can only hope that all involved in this case will take it as a personal mission to decide to get more involved in the lives of their children and the children in their neighborhood, in their community. I was in the last commercial break I was going through a mental exercise and after about, I don't know, maybe five seconds I realized, nope, can't address that. I was sitting here trying to think, what would my late father have said to me if I had been involved in this group of juveniles that stole merchandise from a Walmart, committed a murder, in a Walmart, in a place where there are more cameras than, as the old folk used to say, Kellogg's has cornflakes, but then to post it on social media and let the whole freaking world know. I, I was trying to imagine what my late father would have said to me. And there's no way I could describe it on a family, <laughs> on a family oriented TV show. I, I could not begin to tell y'all what my late father would have said to me. This is a wake up call, folks. And I understand, Glass, we, had, we didn't had wake up calls for this and wake up calls for that. I understand. On many mornings, it's impossible to resist the temptation to hit the snooze bar. I get it. But you got to develop that discipline where you don't hit it the first time. Because if you hit snooze one time, it's going to be even harder to resist hitting snooze when it goes off again in 10 or 15 minutes. That's where we are now, y'all. Listen, I don't care if you are Democrat, Republican, Independent, Black, White, Brown, Red, Yellow, Purple, 
gay, straight, religious, atheist, whatever. I don't care. When we have 12, 13, and 14-year-olds murdering people and then posting it on freaking social media, we got a problem, y'all. We got a problem. And if your parents were anywhere near like mine, they taught us the first step in solving a problem is admitting that there is one. Now, we can do like the politicians. We can stick our heads in the sand. We can go find some other distraction to occupy our time. We can look for causes to point the finger of blame at. Or we can grab this freaking bull by the horns and say enough's enough. We're not standing for this crap anymore. But this stuff starts at home, y'all. Popo can't do it. Congress can't do it. Teachers can't do it. This stuff starts at home. Which is why so many times you hear me say, and a lot of y'all get upset with me, but that's okay, you'll get over it. A lot of y'all get upset with me when I say, this ain't got a damn thing to do with social justice. This has nothing to do with systemic racism. This has nothing to do with climate change. This is about what's happening at home. End of discussion. You can point that finger any way you want to point it. But at the end of the journey, it comes right back home. Sad thing is, we've got a group of folks in this country that are going to make it their mission to find out how and why this is happening, and they're going to blame all sorts of things. Everything but what should be blamed. But you see, that's the problem when you fall into this leftist, liberal mindset. You become a perpetual victim. It's called professional victimhood. Well, it's this person's problem why we're doing this. It's this group's problem why we're doing that. It's that organization's problem. It's this mindset. When in fact, all you got to do is look right inside the four walls of your home. That's what a problem is. And it is manifesting itself in our streets. When a 12, a couple of 13 and a 14 year old group of females will murder someone in front of all the surveillance cameras on the planet. And if that weren't enough, post it on social media so the rest of the folk that don't have access to the surveillance from Walmart can see it. If they'll do that to another 15 year old, just imagine what they'd be willing to do to you. Some of y'all ain't going to get that till later. That's okay. As long as you get it. Of course now, in today's society, a lot of the messages that we are sending to our kids really shouldn't be all that surprised by some of the things that they're doing. You know, when we kill Babies by the millions, life obviously must not be all that precious. You know. What example are we setting when 
the highest legislative body in the land, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a crippling economy, in the midst of all sorts of problems, decides we need to take a couple of weeks and impeach the guy who's no longer in the office that we want to throw him out of, what kind of message are we sending? And make no mistake about it, y'all, our children are watching. They see stuff you don't see. And the message, apparently, that we are sending to them is, well, it's not that big a deal. Otherwise, how could you conceivably carry out an act of murder? That weren't bad enough. You commit a crime stealing the knives from a merchant to commit said murder and then post it for all the world to see. Federal government don't print enough money for me to go back and start over now. Federal government, and y'all know how they print money, they can't print enough money for me to go back now and talk about raising teenagers, not in this world. And, and, and make no mistake about it, when I say that, it's not because of the 12, the 13, the 14, the 15 year olds, it's because of the freaking parents. That's why. Let that sink in. Pause for dramatic effect. Bottom of the hour break. Speaking of government doing stupid stuff, we'll talk about that next on the Clarence Bug Show, here and only here on the Pelican. Stay close. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we get back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Jaguar Nation, we need your help in masking up Louisiana. Mask up or slow the spread of COVID-19. During this time, we must continue to wear a mask. Wash our hands and practice social distancing. It's important that we continue to abide by the CDC's guidelines to stop the spread. Jaguar Nation, we challenge you to mask up. Go Jags! Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hot spiders. Premier Pest Services.
Welcome back to today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, um, <laughs> I, I, I chuckle, but only to cover the ache in my heart for the soul of my country. It is uh, truly a different day. And this whole sordid affair <sighs> makes me wonder whatever happened to common sense in this country? You know, you, you don't have to be the brightest bulb in the chandelier to understand that there are in life consequences to your actions. And this says to me, and, and, and let me preface this right off the bat by saying I have no idea about the home life of all the juveniles in our state that have recently been involved in horrific crimes. But conventional wisdom says you come from a home where there are no consequences to your actions. And as a result, you are more inclined to take liberties that are not yours to take. I was thinking about the little, I didn't know it at the time, but it was a low class neighborhood, socioeconomic, that I grew up in. And I, I, I was just thinking how things of this nature typically don't happen in a vacuum. There typically were some signs that this group of teenagers are headed for some problems down the road. In which case, one or both of the parents of neighbors would have hemmed us up in no uncertain terms. Clarence, what's this I hear about you giving your mama, knowing my mom, hypothetical, was a single parent? The men in the neighborhood would have hemmed me up. What's this I hear about you giving your mama a hard time, boy? I know your dad is not there. I, I, I feel sorry for you, but you can't treat your mama this way. And if you continue to do it, you're going to have to answer to me about it. Put the fear of God in, in, in you at an early age. Of course, now, back then, everybody knew their neighbors. And they trusted them to where if you see Clarence doing something Clarence ain't got no business doing, you wear his behind out. And then call me and let me know what you did and why you did it. And God help him when he get home. When he gets to the house, <laughs> Ding, 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 round two. It's on now, son. And say what you will. Oh, I can't believe your parents brutalized you like that. Say what you will. It served us well. We didn't have kids committing murders. And we sure as heck didn't have them committing murders and getting on the phone and calling everybody they could think of to tell them, guess what I just did, y'all? <laughs> oh. If this does not wake us up, then we deserve what comes next. If we collectively, as a society, do not heed the wake up call, then we deserve what comes next. We have been obviously asleep at the wheel. We have equally as obvious been asleep for far too long. Talk to your children, y'all. I, I, I understand for many of y'all, it's been so long since you've had a meaningful conversation with them, it's probably going to be awkward. But you can either talk to them now or you can talk to the DA later on. Which would you prefer? Speaking of things that make absolutely no sense. 
and a lack of common sense. United States House of Representatives this week walking across the chamber in this real dramatic expression to deliver the articles of impeachment for the second impeachment for President Donald Trump. But he's not the president anymore, right? Correct. So let me get this straight. In the midst of a pandemic, a crippled economy, rising rates of suicide, homicide, domestic violence, businesses being shuttered by the thousands, disconnect of monumental proportions between everyday Americans and our government. And this is what you choose to spend your time on. Ironically, just this week, Joe Biden has now reversed course. Before, you noticed how he was pretty much ambivalent about the whole second impeachment, understanding you're going to go through all of this time, energy, and effort to throw a guy out of office that's already out of office. Now, <laughs> there is the constitutionality issue that is the most glaring. But if I were a Democrat, I would probably be more ticked off than Republicans would. Why? Well, Primarily because we elected you to take care of the people's business. And lest you forget, America's hurting right now. Lest you forget, there's a pandemic going on, people are unemployed, businesses are failing by the tens of thousands. We've got all this myriad of problems going on. And this is what you choose to spend our time on. Well, but I mean, we got to have unity, right? Uh, okay. Meanwhile, you already know, most of you, the line of demarcation when it comes to Democrats and conservatives or Republicans. One is less government, lower taxes. The other, more government, more taxes. Well, just yesterday we talked about executive order number, what is it, he's up to 21 now, more executive orders in the first week than any other president. But yesterday we talked about shutting down of the Keystone XL pipeline and the jobs that's going to entail, what it's going to mean for the environment, the whole nine. Well, now, Joe Biden's Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, almost said it, Marty, almost said it. Buttigieg is suggesting that we implement now a tax on Americans for the amount of miles that you drive. The Biden administration is touting an ambitious $1 trillion infrastructure package. Of course, problem is with that you got to pay for it. So Pete Buttigieg is proposing, among other things, that we tax people based on the amount of miles that they drive. Quote, I think all options need to be on the table. As you know, the federal gas tax has not been increased since 1993, and it has never been pegged to inflation. And it's one of the reasons why the current state of highway trust fund is that there's more going out than coming in. Well, that may well be the case. It was never indexed for inflation, 
so it didn't rise as the cost of everything else rose. But I would suggest more than anything, the real reason our infrastructure is crumbling beneath our feet is because you yahoos, Buttigieg, you in this number, you all, year after year after year after year, have taken billions upon billions upon trillions of Americans' taxpayers' dollars and sent them to freaking overseas countries that don't have our best interest at heart. If you, Peter, inside joke for Marty, if you stop voting to send 15, 25 million dollars for freaking gender studies programs in Pakistan, no less, maybe we wouldn't have to tax American taxpayers to fix our freaking roads. But that's okay. Go on with the, you know, go on spend the time impeaching the guy who's no longer in office. We'll just tax the American driver to pay for the infrastructure we need. While, by the way, we give away trillions of your dollars to other folks. Yeah. And Congress has to wonder why their approval rating is in single digits? Hmm. Final break of today's show. Get this out of the way. So how's the COVID vaccine working in Louisiana? Particularly among those in the healthcare field? Funny you should ask. Got the answer for you. That's next on the Clarence Bug Show. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats, taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. We're making 2021 the year of savings, and it starts right now at Team Toyota. Come get a new 21 Corolla for just $189 a month, or get a 20 Camry for just $19,995. It's a year full of savings starting right now, right here at Team Toyota. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Nothing could ever Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now.
Welcome back to the final segment of today's edition. Thank you, Marty, of the Clarence Bug Show. <laughs> they didn't tell you. I just happened to see it pop up on the monitor. Like, oh, okay, we're back. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm supposed to do stuff. Might want to do something. I uh, uh, want to cover a, a lot of ground quickly in, in this final segment. Um, Governor John Bell Edwards and LDH officials are expressing concern over the number of health care workers in the capital region that have decided not so far to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, health care workers includes clinical and non-clinical, meaning everyone from janitors all the way up to surgeons. Um, according to Chris Nakamoto of the ABC affiliate here in the capital city, WBRZ, an analysis of records show that 47 percent, just shy of half, of health care workers have not opted to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, Our Lady of the Lake in Baton Rouge, 54 percent have gotten the COVID-19 vaccine, which equates to 46 percent have not. Baton Rouge General, 55 percent which equates to 45% have not. Oshner, 53%. Conversely, 47% have not. Women's Hospital, um, no immediate number on the number of vaccines given, but 50% of workers accepted, while 50% have declined. Some have said it is due in part, and I will leave to you to decide what the percentage is, uh, that individuals that have not taken the vaccine is because they are allowing others that are in more need, the elderly, those with pre-existing comorbidities, et cetera, et cetera. I will lead to you to decide uh, what that percentage is. Also, I would uh, really be remiss in my duties if I did not take the opportunity uh, to send out some very heartfelt condolences to the entire BRPD family, and particularly the family of Detective Sergeant Charles Dotson, a longtime public servant in the capital city, uh, and for our nation, for that matter, succumbing this past weekend to complications associated with COVID-19. He is... Um, a guy that had a lot of parallels in his life with my late father. He was a native of New Roads, Louisiana, over in the great parish of Point Compete, raised in Maringouin, graduated from Shady Grove High School, went on to join the United States Marine Corps, where he served our country for 27 years, retired at the rank of first sergeant, went on to serve as a member of law enforcement in Iberville Parish, where he worked as a deputy. After that, joined the BRPD in 1999. He graduated from the police academy, spent six years in uniform patrol, becoming a detective in major assaults. In 2017, he was promoted to sergeant and was assigned at the time of his death to the Violent Crimes Unit at the Louisiana State Police Headquarters. He is um, an individual that loved God and country, believed in the rule of law and order, uh, and did so much to help so many throughout his years of service, both in the military and law enforcement. Uh, those of you that are members of the community of faith, if you would, please be so kind as to keep the family of Detective Sergeant Charles Dotson in both your thoughts and your prayers. Uh, I don't know anything about the family, don't know if they are people of faith or not, but I am relatively sure that they would not mind in the least if you were to keep them in your thoughts and in your prayers. Um, before we leave, I, I, I want to make an appeal I want to ask white people to do something for me. No. <laughs> Marty said, no. 
Oh, so you speak for all white people now, huh? <laughs> See how that works? We tied. <laughs> white folks is tied, y'all. We tied. We just tied. I would like, as a personal favor, and I know I'm asking a lot because of the climate in our country these days, but white people, will y'all please stop apologizing for stuff? Y'all are not helping. <laughs> Marty's like, okay. <laughs> right? On this date, Clarence Bugs asked white people, that's me, to please stop apologizing for stuff. Y'all not helping. Y'all are actually making it worse. Understand something here, y'all. And, and this is for black and white alike. Despite what the media tells you, there is no guaranteed right to go through this life and not be offended. Nowhere in the Constitution does it state that life is bed of roses and your precious feelings matter more than the Constitution or civil liberties or civil rights or anything else in life. That doesn't exist. And I'm referencing Donald Rouse Sr. of Rouse's family supermarket fame and this apology tour that he's on after being photographed at a pro-Trump rally where violence broke out. It is amazing to me how individuals and, and this is more an indictment of what we've become as a society than it is on Donald Rouse Sr. Don't know the guy. Never met him. But at the end of the day, the guy went to attend a rally, something he viewed as being historic in nature. Didn't take part in the violence. Had nothing to do with the violence. So why the hell are you apologizing? Why? At the end of the day, all you did was exercise a constitutional right. Yeah, but Clarence, you got, you, you got to realize them people were hooligans out there. Well, was he one of them? Well, no, nah, but he was there. Oh, so now we're a country where guilt by association is the deciding factor? White people stop apologizing for stuff. You're just making it worse. Because at the end of the day, unless and until an individual is involved in an activity that deprives someone else of a constitutional or civil right, no harm, no foul. That's the beauty of America. That's what makes us great. Of course, now, your sleepy eyed behind in civics class, you slept through that part. So you have no appreciation or understanding of what this country's all about. Yeah, but Clarence, you got to realize he, he got customers he got to look, he, he got to be thinking about. I understand that. I get it. You seem to forget my family was in retail for many years. But at the end of the day, none of that supersedes your rights as an American. But that's what happens when you kowtow to people. Now, all of a sudden, whatever it is that hurts my little feelings, you got to apologize. <laughs> I got your apology, buddy, right here. Right here, right now. White people stop apologizing for stuff. Now, if you, you know, murdered somebody, well, apologize. If, you know, you caused a wreck on the one freaking interstate we got running through the middle of town because you were on the phone and you tied up traffic for the whole day, well then apologize. But when all you're doing is exercising your constitutional freaking rights, stop apologizing. You're just making it worse. And on that note, I gotta go. <laughs> this day, maybe more so than any other, I give it to you, y'all. You're right, America, we ain't perfect, but doggone it for this old boy's money, 
It's still the best there is. And God knows there is no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, I hope you figured out by now that he loves you. And you know that I do too. Either way, <laughs> there ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. Take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>